This is your official civil defense announcer speaking with a very important message. But first, this musical interlude. And welcome to the Oddity Archive. The hell was that? Uh, the show that could very well save your life. That is, if you can comprehend our instructions. Where the hell is that coming from? Um, today... We're going to, once again, get back to the Archive's roots with our long-awaited return to creepy broadcasting stuff. <sighs> Today, we take a look, a deeper look than we have in the past, at America's first stab at civil defense broadcasting, and uh, in some ways, just civil defense in general, Connellrad. No beep. As American as apple pie and ice cream. As a matter of fact, you can find apple pie here and ice cream too. But appearances are deceptive. This is not an American town. However, it may be assumed that such a town does exist, shrouded in secrecy, and protected by utmost security, deep behind the Iron Curtain. In the wake of World War II, and with the rise of the USSR, not to mention the lingering memories of Pearl Harbor, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki, a certain paranoia over the rise of nuclear weapons took hold. In one of the, in retrospect, least surprising developments of the period, the powers that be decided that America needed some sort of public civil defense broadcast system. The original idea of what became Conrad was introduced in March of 1951. The idea was to equip at least one commercial AM radio station in each market with either a private or direct line to the Air Defense Control Centers, or ADCC. These stations would be known as basic key stations. Any messages received would also be relayed, also via private or direct line, to, as they were so imaginatively known, relay key stations. Conelrad, a.k.a. Control of Electromagnetic Radiation, was implemented on December 10, 1951, by President Harry Truman. By this point, Conelrad had evolved into a two-pronged concept. Number one, as before, Conelrad would provide vital communication to the public in the event of an attack. And number two, Conelrad would help to, hopefully, confuse any enemy bombers during an attack. Taking a page from the British during World War II, most broadcasting would cease in the event of an event, the reason being that the government, rightly, feared that enemies could use any transmitted signals as a navigational aid. In this case, all TV, FM, and amateur radio would have to shut down during an emergency. ...on your standard radio will bring you vital information from community, state, and national officials. In case of enemy attack, tune to 640 or 1240 on your radio. Connell Rad.
We interrupt our normal program to cooperate in security and civil defense measures as requested by the United States government. This is a Conrad radio alert. Normal broadcasting will now be discontinued for an indefinite period. All residents in and around Erie County will receive official Erie County Civil Defense bulletins on 640 kilocycles on your radio receiver, while the residents in and around Niagara County should tune to 1240 kilocycles. As for AM radio, in the event of an attack, all basic key stations would power off their transmitters for five seconds, power back on for another five seconds, off again for another five seconds, power on again and broadcast 15 seconds of a one kilohertz tone, then broadcast a pre-recorded, by that particular station, message informing listeners of an attack and to tune to either 640 or 1240, whichever frequency their area had been assigned to. From there, the basic and relay key stations would go into a round-robin mode. This meant the basic key station would broadcast pertinent info on its assigned frequency for a brief period, then power down and get replaced for another brief period by one of the relay key stations on the same frequency. This would then pass on to the next station and continue in a cycle. This is Times Square, New York, prior to the start of a civil defense drill, highlighting Operation Alert. On June 14, 1954, Conrad had its first major test, known as Operation Alert, which became an annual tradition. Every year, Americans would be subjected to a mock attack, complete with a hypothetical body count, as a means of emergency preparedness. Anyway, right out of the gate, this test exposed some truly damning flaws in the system. The biggest flaw stemmed from the fact that, even in the 50s, there were enough radio stations in the country, on the Conrad system no less, that the distance in air miles between stations was minimal and would have little effect on any enemy bomber's navigational efforts. Another problem with the system came from basic key stations and their need to power their transmitters on and off in five second intervals at the start of the alert. A few of these transmitters couldn't handle such brief and abrupt demands and were irreparably damaged in the process. Amazingly enough though, this particular requirement carried well into the emergency broadcast system or EBS era starting in 1963. This was eventually dubbed the EBS stress test. This requirement wasn't dropped until the implementation of the now common and infinitely safer and simpler dual tone attention signal in the mid 70s. But I digress. In some places, like New York City, Operation Alert was taken so seriously that it could mean up to a year in prison and or an up to $500 fine to not participate in the drill. Well, assuming you were caught. However, with each passing year, it became more and more obvious that the Conrad system simply did not work, and things like penalties for non-participation died off. On September 1st, 1959, the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM, was accepted for service in the U.S. The Russians had already done so back in February. But with it, it rendered the need for a bomber to personally deliver a nuke obsolete. It also rendered Conrad's round-robin broadcast method 100% moot. Despite this, and all of Conrad's flaws, Operation Alert was nonetheless carried out every year until 1961. On August 5, 1963, Conrad finally folded and was replaced with the willfully more general purpose emergency broadcast system. The Conrad era left behind a ton of ephemera, most famously a bunch of informational films and just leaflets galore. Go on eBay sometime, you'll find a ton of them. And, uh, but as for me personally, my Conrad stash is a little slim. But uh, anyway, I, I, I do think it is kind of significant. A while back, I found these three one-sided LPs 
And uh, these things were used uh, probably in the late 50s, early 60s, as a means of training potential leaders of local civil defense units. Now, I'm 99.99999999 99999998% certain that these things initially came with uh, either boxes of slides or film strips and uh, as you've probably gathered I don't have them and alas I have had absolutely zero luck in tracking those down but uh, despite this I think I've still gleaned a good insight into how Conrad and just the civil defense stuff works on a more micro level. Uh, and I guess just my very possessing these LPs at this point would uh, kind of make me by default my own block warden, wouldn't it? <laughs> Your local civil defense presents Damage Survey for Rescue Workers. They'll never feature this home in House Beautiful. Once a credit to our neighborhood, now just a maze of rubble, a battered victim of blast. Honestly, these discs make for a pretty dry listening experience, and even if I had the slides to go with them, I don't think it would really be much better. So what I've done here is, despite the lack of the visuals, I've decided to try and take these three discs and create a very, admittedly, very, very consolidated version of what it's like to listen to one of these things straight through. And so, yeah, because it's all three, it's not really going to make a whole lot of sense uh, in terms of linear storytelling. But I just, uh, I had to try and get in all those little tropes, you know, like stuff along the lines of the occasional stab at storytelling with uh, multiple characters, no less. Or the occasional awkward stab at using slang. Uh, slang that was probably a solid 20 years out of date back then. And uh, definitely uh, on the unnerving side, there's this kind of bizarre tendency of sounding like they were kind of hoping that a nuclear attack would occur. Or, I don't know, at least a natural disaster, you know. Everybody's got to have their fun. Enjoy! Enjoy! Your Civil Defense presents Rescue from Basements. We've got to be on our toes for this training session. Here's the pitch for tonight, fellas. We're going to discuss what basements are. Let's take a look at some drawings. That opened my eyes. I said to myself, if the Civil Defense Rescue Service must operate with speed and precision to free trapped people from damaged structures immediately after an atomic attack, then they're going to need construction-wise fellows like me. But those were other places, other times. Right now, it's this place, and we're moving in to take a gander through the doors and windows. Dangers all the way. Escaping gas, water flooding, Exposed electrical connections, even fire. Basements seem to have all the hazards. We rescue men must realize that walls left standing may be dangerously cracked or bulging. Home sweet homicide. There are eight good safety precautions to remember. One of them is keeping your helmet on your head. If you don't, you're liable to lose it. And I don't mean your helmet. It'd be cooler without the helmets, of course, 
But only a guy with a wooden head would take a chance on wearing a loose two-by-four for a hat. Don't move furniture or debris any more than you have to. And if you do move something, be darn sure that it's not supporting a beam or a fallen floor. Otherwise, you may end up on the wrong end of a blood plasma tube. The word for today is take it easy, but don't waste time. By now, we're both dying for a smoke, but we're sure not going to like matches in here. Not while we're looking for gas and fire hazards. And it'll work two ways. Team members will be picking up valuable dope while they're doing their rescue job. During training, now, get all the dope you can from utility companies or municipal engineering offices and keep up to date. Procedures may change as better methods are developed. Well, fellas, we're going to spend the rest of this evening working on our equipment. Now, since tomorrow is Saturday, we've agreed to go out on a field training exercise on this same subject, rescue from basements. I'll uh, have a couple of old hands there to illustrate rescue techniques. Here they come, but they're not going to find any casualties. Not here. Not in this house set up specially for training exercises like we've just gone through. But they're going to go through it anyway, practicing all they can toward the day when maybe it'll be the real McCoy. Houses and shambles and trapped people in pain. In those days, this training will really pay off because Dan and I will have done a fast and thorough damage survey job for our teammates. That's the way to save lives, your life, and the lives of the trapped casualties we'll be helping in that D-Day that may be just around the basement corner. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I launch my little crusade to reinstate the annual Operation Alert drills and collect $500 apiece from anyone that dares to question my authority. Nothing like staring down the camera. Oh. It's one episode down. Three more to go. And voiceovers. And that collaboration. Nothing like living on a damn treadmill. And I am missing my next box shot. Lovely. Oh well. I need to swap out the SD card anyway. Rest for the wicked. Well, it's finally happened. And fool that I am, I didn't charge my camcorder battery for my usual camcorder. The one for the VHS camcorder is dead. And my cell phone doesn't do video. So I'm stuck with the PXL. Honestly, I'm very, very afraid to open that curtain. I need to find a generator. Because I think it's time. And I brought out something I hoped to God I would never have to bring out. Lord have mercy on us all.
not having any luck. K2LAK calling CQ. K2LAK calling CQ. K2LAK calling CQ. Is there anybody out there? Hopefully this is enough power. Uh, all right, all right. Um, all right, channel 19. There goes nothing. Uh, happy hamster crawling. Yay. Anyone out there? Happy hamster. Oh, forget it. I swear if this doesn't work, I am giving up on getting a generator. I work so hard on this stuff. I know I'm good. I want to help. Now that things have gone wrong, I want to help. Watch. I know I can make this work. If I can make this stupid thing work with batteries and some other garbage. Get in there. Come on. Come on. Is anybody out there and listening? I need a generator. I want to help. I need a generator. Why doesn't anybody listen to me? Why doesn't anybody listen to me? over now. Looks like it's down to just you and me, Connell Red. Just you and little old me. <laughs> Message from the gods.
silly old Benny boy. You really thought there was an attack, didn't you? If there were, you'd probably be mutating about now or something. Paranoid.